If you or someone you know has diabetes, you may have built up an excess supply of test strips and lancets. That's where we come in. We'll buy the supplies that you don't need and resell them to those in need to prevent waste. Help us make diabetes management more affordable. Visit us at teststripswithaz.com. All right, joining the program right now takes on Andre Sukumta on April 13th, UFC 236 in Atlanta. And this is a hell of a fight, ladies and gentlemen. Montel Jackson is here. Montel, how are you, man? Pretty good, man. How are you guys doing? I'm doing good. Uh, so you and I were just talking about the the new intricacies of Skype. And we wish it was easier, like, like it used to be probably like a year or two ago. What are your thoughts on Skype right now? Oh uh, man, Skype's kind of <laughs> crappy, man. Oh, you want to interview? I'm sorry. They, 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 they asked uh, for, for too much... Uh... It's, it's it's just like Apple, man. It's, it's like too many passwords, too many hindrances. It's, it's, it should just be simple to connect just like it was back in the day. I couldn't agree more. And so for you, we're a little less than a month away from your return to the Octagon, taking on a tough opponent. How's uh, how's the training going? How are you feeling right now heading into this one? Oh, training is going good, man. Stay focused. Uh, Weights down. So easy work so far. All right. Uh it's kind of weird to think back because going through and, and kind of like looking back on everything less than a year ago, you're fighting on the contender series. And now fast forward less than a year later, you're getting ready for your third UFC fight. Like how would you describe this last nine months to a year for you? Uh, a journey, man. <laughs> like, a, does it feel like a blur? Like, no, like, like, I, like I always knew that this, I always knew that this moment was going to come. So I just always tried to be prepared for it and uh, ready for the opportunities when it presented itself. So it, every everything right now isn't a surprise, man. It's, it's what I've been working for. You fought Brian Kelleher at UFC 232 in your last fight. You finished it with a dark choke in less than two minutes. How did that feel to to get that elusive first win in the UFC? I know how important that first win is, and now you can kind of keep on going and keep tracking the progress in the right direction. Yeah, you know, for me, it's just like, you know, it happened. It's over with. You know, celebrating a moment, but then it's like you go back, go back to the drawing board. You start all over. You look to add, you know, more to your game. You know, try to fill those holes. So like, it's always, it's always looking for like improvement, man. Like I, I don't dwell on stuff, stuff like that. That stuff, it happened already. So for you, go. so for you, you you get a win like that on a, on a big stage like that. Do you take any time to smell the roses, or you just get right back to it? No, man. Like when when they raise my hand and they give me a little interview, that's the roses right there. That's it's over. <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, you made your debut against Ricky Simone and you lost the decision. But I remember talking to Simone after the fight and talking to some other bantamweights as well. Uh, and they all agreed. They had a lot of respect for you. They thought you were super tough. But what I noticed, you know, during that fight and even at its conclusion, and I think a lot of other people felt the same way that despite the loss. You know, the fans, the media, they all said, you know, this guy Montel Jackson is going to be a problem for people at 135 pounds in the future. Like, so even though you didn't get the W and I know you're ready to move on to the next thing, did, did it sort of soften the blow a bit that you got so much support despite not getting the victory? I hate losing, man. I hate losing with a passion. It's nothing anyone can tell me, you know, when I lose. If I lose, it's a problem. Like, I hate losing. So, like, it was nothing anybody could tell me like, oh, you know, you did you did a good job. It was only six days. Notice. That's all excuses to me. I, I don't listen to shit like that. I don't want to hear shit like that. Like if even for someone trying to give me some pity like that, man, I, I cuss you out. It's not need to want to or accept it, man. You know, I hate losing. Did you take anything away from that? experience at all you're not making any excuses or anything but did you at least you know take some lessons learn anything along the way that that you could use in the future or it was just you know you got in a fight it didn't happen now we're just moving on to the next one oh uh, uh it, it just it just it, it reinforced uh, what, what i was always taught you know you can say you want an opportunity you can say i want this i want that but if you're not ready for an opportunity when it comes you're just gonna blow it so you can say it all you want to. I want an opportunity. I want a chance. I want this. I want that. I want a shot. Are you really ready for this shot when it comes? Now See you what get, Go ahead. When my shot came, I missed it. You know. So let 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 my experience be a, in a, a lesson to all the other guys that's up and coming. Be ready for your shot. Be ready for that hypothetical term in basketball. Be ready for the ball when when it's coming your way. Like be ready to shoot. You know. 
how your feet set, you know? Be ready for it. Don't get the ball and, you know, miss, and miss your shot, man, for real. You got it right back, and, and you slam dunked it against Brian Kelleher. But now you get Andre Sukumta. He's, he's your next guy. He's had a pretty interesting run in the organization. In a lot of people's minds, he should be 4-1 and one in the UFC. He lost a couple of uh, controversial split decisions to start his career. Then he had that finish win over Luke Sanders. Had the fight with Sean O'Malley that a lot of people talked about and then got the victory in his last fight. When you got the call that, that Andre was the guy, what did you think of the booking and, and Andre as an opponent? Uh, I, I, I really don't know anything about Andre, you know. Like, they just told him, like, oh, I'm going to tell you we got an opponent for you. Or we got to fight for you, basically. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Let's start the process. I love your but attitude, the- man. <laughs> So it doesn't matter. It didn't matter who the name was. You just said yes, and let's let's sign the papers and go. Oh, that shit don't matter, man. That do not matter. How does that change your approach in terms of, of training? Because obviously you're a guy I, I see on social media. You're training all the time, posting new videos, trying to evolve and do these different things. When you finally get a name, pen to paper, ready to go, do you, do you start looking into them, or are you just really focus on what you're going to do, and it doesn't really matter what they're going to do or what they've done in the past? When I was in when I was in school, the main thing my teachers always told me: keep your eyes on your own paper, <laughs> look at nobody else's paper. Worry about your paper. So I just gotta keep that. I gotta keep my eyes on my prize, man. I'm, I'm not. I'm not worried about anybody, man. Look, looking amazing. at somebody else's plate, your food gonna get cold. You no. Know? <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you approach fighting. It's it's I, I've honestly I, I've interviewed probably I've interviewed hundreds of fighters at this point, but never the never to the point of you're just so relaxed about it all. Like you you're focused on yourself, coming up with all these great analogies and in, in converting it to fighting. Like where does that where does that calmness and that rela- relaxation come from for you as a fighter? Because not a lot of people are like that. Man, the stuff I don't mean, the stuff I don't live through, man. It's a fight. I know it can happen in a fight. It's a structured fight. It's ain't like my neighbor on the street or some shit. Like I know it's gonna happen. Nothing to afraid of. Like I, I've had basically hundreds of mini fights in the gym, drilling this, going through this. It's whole understand. It's whole mindset. It's whole logic. Like you, you literally need to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Like, like, like the only person I'm afraid of is myself. You know. So That's it. it. Everything else is oblivious to me, man. So when it comes to the guys that are making things uncomfortable for you preparing for this fight, who are some of the guys you're working with that are getting you ready for this one? Oh, man, anybody anybody that show up, man, really. You know, our team always, you know, is here working. So I got Zach Otto, Leah Ledton. I got Walton, Cunningham. I got – we got an up-and-coming guy named Tyus. Uh, my, my friend uh, Arian. I, I, I got a lot of guys. I got a lot of friends over at, at 360. I roll with in the morning. Charlie Radke, Sky Houston, Dan Borg. Like, I, I put myself in a, in a tough spot, man. That's great. When, when you kind of think about this fight, and I don't even know why I'm asking you this because you're probably just like, hey, whatever. Whatever happens, happens. But are you a guy that visualizes things at all? Like, do you see, do you close your eyes and think about the fight and, and kind of see the way this thing goes down? Do you see how your hand gets raised is, or do you just see yourself getting your hand raised or whatever happens? However, the chips may fall, let them fall and you're going to win. Uh, to, to be honest with you, man, I just, by any means necessary, man, that's all I tell myself. I, 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 I don't, I, I really don't give a fuck if it's by knockout, by TKO, by submission, by split, I don't give a fuck, man. I'm I'm going out there and I'm looking for a W. That's it. Plain and simple, like visualizing myself. That's done, man. And my mind, I already won. Like, <laughs> tell me. I love this stuff, man. Uh, when it comes down to it, you know, you get a win over Andre Sukumta. Everyone, like fans and, and media members, know that Andre's a really tough guy, and this would be a really good win for you. Start stringing some stuff together. Bantamweight's really interesting right now. Are you the kind of guy that's, you know, kind of looking ahead to his next opportunity? Like, what wh- what are you thinking right now when it comes to what could be next? Or are you just kind of approaching it in a sense of whoever they, whoever calls me, whoever wants it, let's go. To, to be honest with you, man, like. I'm not a matchmaker. I'm not a fortune teller. I'm not a psychic. I don't know, man. Like, honestly, 
whatever happens, happens. And I deal with it as it comes along. Like, like I'm not like one of those guys. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. Like, I don't live in the future. I don't live in the past. I live for right now. Day by day. That's it. So there's all no, that stuff. There's all nobody, that stuff. <laughs> go ahead. It make you crazy. It literally makes you crazy. It may drive people crazy. Like, there's no way. Like, I'm putting that much press on myself. So, no. That's smart. I mean, is there anybody that you're like looking at? You're just like, damn, I want to fight this guy. Like, even if not, not just in a call out sense, but just like kind of looking up at that, that division, you know, just, to, just as a fighter and as a competitor, do you see anybody there that's, you know, maybe in the top 15 that, that you're like, all right, I think that we'd have a lot of fun getting in there together. Or you just really don't think about that stuff at all. Man, everybody's fool. Everybody's fool. Like I, I'm, I'm not no guy to go. Oh, I want this guy. I want that guy. Or I think that guy would be a good matchup for me. That shit don't matter, man. It's going to be all the same result for me. A fucking W. They're all food. Fucking somebody up. Like, that's it. That's all that's going to happen. <laughs> no need to over to, like, sit there and overthink shit. Like, oh, I'm going to do this. Do that to this guy. If I fight or fight this guy, I think I match up well. Shut up, man. <laughs> Shut up. You just, you just literally just said... You literally just said... To me, like when I see here fighters talk about shit like that, it's like literally like, okay, so you saying you're confident to beat this style. What about the other styles? Like, what the fuck? Like, you saying you're not confident to beat another guy that's doing the opposite amount of things that he's doing or he's good at? It's crazy, man. Have you ever thought about hosting a podcast? No, man. Like, <laughs> I, I, like, like, um, uh, like. Certain stuff, man. Like I just start ranting, man. So no. <laughs> but you bring I some. You bring some really interesting thoughts to the fight game, though. Like I'm telling you, I've I've interviewed a lot of fighters. I've interviewed champions. I've interviewed people who are fighting for titles. Nobody thinks like this in the fight game. Is that just like give you such a competitive advantage in your mind that you just take all of that pressure off of yourself? Like I think you could you could show like the next generation of fighters. You know whether they're, they're going to be fighting you in the cage or or whatnot. Like I think you have a lot of information to offer people. Yeah, man. Like you, when you, like when, when you sit back and you break down what people are saying, and then you break down their body language and, as to what they're saying, you can see that you can see either truth or you can see like this guy's a liar. He's saying one thing, or oh, I think I'm gonna do this, but his body language is telling you something different. You know, I think I think it's like 85% of communication is, is nonverbal. You know, so when I see these guys give interviews or I see these guys talk about the fights that they want, it's like. That motherfucker really don't want that fight. He just he just got put on the spot and he's only agreeing because he don't want to tuck his toe and look like a bitch, you know? Like that's that's literally how I look at people and I, I break people down. Like from from the top of the roster to the bottom of the roster, like if I catch someone's interview, I'll catch a glimpse of somebody or I see what they say on like Instagram or Twitter or some shit, like I can tell like this guy's unsure of himself. He don't really got that confidence. But you haven't. And, and like, yeah, and like, probably like the only reason like people fucking talk a lot is to, to reassure themselves and try to like insert some doubt into their opponent. But like, that shit don't work, man. That shit literally don't work, you know? If you don't believe it yourself, no one's going to believe it. And it's hard to make someone else believe it. If you don't fucking die hard, like, I believe this is going to happen. Yes, you no. Know? Like, you look at those guys, elite, those coats, like, they got supreme confidence in, like, the world is going to fucking end. So much that they, they can get another fucking person to believe some shit that they, that they truly believe, like, think about it, man. Oh, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. It, it really does. Um, so would you like, as a fighter, would you appreciate a world where, you know, you don't get a lot of those headline interviews. It's just like, you know, people just being themselves like you, like, you, did, would, would you... Look at the sport a little differently when it comes to that, like kind of giving more merit to the competition side as opposed to, you know, who can tell the best nursery rhyme or who can who can throw the best insult out or who did the best boom roasted. Do you, you know what I mean? Like, do you wish fighting kind of went away from the trash talk more so to just the merit based performance inside the cage? Or are you cool with whatever happens here? It's like you you can't have one without the other. Man. You, you can't have a good without the bad. You know, like, like for me, like I, you know, it's a fight, like whatever. 
Like you could like you could say whatever you want to say about me, but like if you say something about like my family or like, the people I love, you're in some fucking trouble. But, like other than that, like yeah, go ahead, say whatever you want to, you know. Yell at me, you can scream, you can say whatever you say whatever you want to say about me, you know. To me, you know, the loudest person is the weakest, you know. Because because the guys the guys that know they ain't, they not gonna they not gonna tell you anything they gonna show you, and I'm a I sh- I show people but ain't no talking needed, ain't no jokes needed, ain't no ribbon, ain't no trashing, heckling the per- all that shit ain't needed. When they lock that door and they ring that bell, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you I'm the best. Man, I'm lo- I'm loving this. What a great conversation this has been, Montel Montel Jackson showing everybody who he is right here. He's just being himself, and I couldn't appreciate you taking the time anymore, my man. Uh, before we get out of here, let the folks know where to find him. Following the web, social media, any shout outs, sponsors, take the floor, my man. Oh man, um, thank thank you, man. You know, usually you know, if it weren't for Ed, man, I, I really would not do interviews, man. So thank thank Ed at Iridium. <laughs> Thank Iridium Management Group. Thank Pure Vita, uh, my camp, my teammates, my coaches. Thank um, Combat Corner. Thank Flow Life. Thank Pro Start Athletes. Thank Nick Belegas. He makes my food. And he does my, my, my training for speed of sport. No. Really, really not, not, not too many people would think, man. No. <laughs> So that first comment about doing interviews is that is that just a shot at interviews in general? Are you are, are you taking a shot at me there, Montel? No, man. I, I'm, I'm telling you, man. I, I really don't want to do interviews for one. I'm just and then with you. two, and then like two, like like you know when I I look I look at the guys that like all like like you look at like all the major uh, interview interview interviewing platforms or people that you know that blog and do interviews and stuff like they don't freaking interview like they don't interview like the up and coming guys. They don't interview like prospects. They don't interview like the rides and stars. They don't interview, you know? So like so like I think about that in my head, like you wasn't interv- you interviewing me before, so like why should I really take the time out to like do an interview for you? Like that's how I look at it. Like and eventually, you know, when I when I do reach that level, you know. I'm gonna make those guys fucking interview guys. That's that's like Laura, like Laura on the fucking line. Like, if you want to interview me, you gotta interview two of the guys that's up and coming before you interview me. Otherwise, I'm not gonna take your interview because that's garbage. You know. No, I I completely agree. And you know, guys like myself, guys like James Lynch, who I'm sure you've talked to on on many of occasion. Um, we've had that moniker since since we got into this thing, um, interviewing the regional people. Like, and Ed Ed knows straight up. He wants me to interview anybody, I'll interview him. It doesn't matter if they're in the UFC or if they're in CES, if they're an amateur. I've interviewed amateur fighters. Like, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to interview people. And and I'm glad I've tried to get you on a few different times. Timing just didn't really line up. I actually got from Ed at one point. He doesn't really like to do interviews. I'll do my best. Uh, but I appreciate you doing this tonight, man. I really do. And and I hope to do it again down the road because I had a lot of fun and I learned a lot from you. I got a different perspective on the fight game from you and I really appreciate that. And then, and then, and then too, we gotta address another problem. What's up? We gonna, we gonna address these fucking sponsors, man. All Please right. Look, listen, man. All right. You become a pro. That means a professional. That means you get paid. Okay. You get paid. All right. Time, services, whatever. You get paid for that. All right. Right. Some of these people that they, they try to offer sponsorships and shit. They try to offer you products. That shit, that shit literally, it ain't worth it. So like, people ask me like, Montel, you don't have any sponsors? No, I don't have any sponsors, no. No, like you barter like social media shit and fucking like them promoting all that bullshit. Like you do that shit with amateur guys. You fucking professional. We get paid for our services, okay? We get paid for our platforms. All the other shit, man, save that shit. I don't want it. I don't. I, I truly, I truly don't want it. Don't even fucking ask. <laughs> A message for all the potential inquiries here. 
come with money or don't even ask them. That's just the way I see it. Is is that like a no to everybody at this point? Yeah, or just literally and that and some of these pro fighters, the older guys, they fuck the game up by accepting that shit. You need to get fucking paid. Like, everybody fucking pay. Not with no fucking product either. You pay, motherfucker. Yeah, I work I work in radio, been working in radio for a long time on like every side of the business from on the air to to the consulting roles. And yeah, yeah I run into businesses like that too. They're like, well, we just do trade. Like, we'll give you gift cards. Can you run commercials if we just give you the gift cards? No, man, write a check. You know, we're giving you this big platform to promote your company. Like, pay us. Like, we'll take a little bit of the barter here and there, but not not 100%. Like, I, t- I definitely understand where you're coming from. In, in in one side of the business, obviously you're a fighter and you're you're putting yourself on the line in front of a lot of people. You know, I I completely agree with you. I think the sponsorship model right now in professional mixed martial arts is, you know, some some is good. Some do the some are done in the the correct way where fighters are being you know co- compensated and treated correctly, and and others you know have been have been shafted. And I hate hearing those stories. So um, another lesson that that you've taught some of the young up and coming. What else you got? What other lessons do you want to you want to throw out there today? Like, okay, like uh, the, the the three things I learned about if you want to become successful, coming from where I come from, I come from uh, I come from a property stricken area, a lot of crime, uh, single parent household. Like the the three things I learned that led me to being successful. Number one, I changed the things I did. I'm sorry. Number two, I changed the area I hung out in. Number three, I changed who I hung out with. If you want to win, anybody want to win, you want to be successful, hang around successful people. Like, you are who you hang around. I couldn't you hang more. around with losers and shit, you're going to be you're gonna be a fucking loser. If you hang around non-broke motherfuckers, you're going to be the team broke motherfuckers. Like, that's bizarre true, man. It is. It's literally, it's, it's literally fucking true. Like once, once I did that, man, it started happening, man. Slowly but surely, you know, man. I started being successful, man. Just just hanging around other successful people, man. You know, you pick up their habits, you pick up their mannerisms, you pick up their work ethic, you know. You pick up their drive, you pick up ambition, you know. Like you figure out, you figure out your self worth and stuff, you know. Holding yourself accountable, man. Being responsible for yourself and yourself only, you know. Not making excuses. And then, too, you know, you get a chance to see and to learn from other people and their mistakes, you know. Like, a lot of successful people, they made a lot of mistakes to get to where they at. So, if I, so the one way I became successful faster is I saw the mistakes they made, and I didn't make the same mistake. You know, I learned from their mistakes. So, like, that, that was another key thing that, you know, like you know, led to my success at a, at a elevated like uh, rate, and and then too you know, hanging around the people that you know, that's way better than you, man. No ego needed, you know, not not feeling like insecure, or you don't you shouldn't be there, or you don't belong. Not feeling jealous or envious, you know, just being there, you know, generally there to learn, and, you know, and appreciate the people, you know. For giving you their time, you know, like that, that's like, that shit pays dividends, man. Like literally, you know, like, I, I want to think like all like, all like the, the older fighters that I ran to, you know, listening to like their mistakes that they made in their career. Like, you know, I, I want to thank those guys, you know, like, like I was mentored by like a lot of like veteran fighters, you know. So like, I, I want to just thank those guys, man. Because that's like, you know, it helped me learn the fight game, you know. It helped me, you know, figure out what to do and what not to do, you know, without making the mistakes they make, you know. That's great stuff, man. I, I And I appreciate your time tonight, very much so. And uh, all the best to you heading into April 13th and the trip to Atlanta and your fight against Andre Sukumta. Thanks for the time, Montel. Really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Peace, love, and plenty of head grease, my brother.